and scurvy into the research. I guess it's due to the oxidative stress. It's happening quick. And every single person I'm seeing post-infection is showing low vitamin C. So we're just keeping people on two to three grams every day. And we're doing a powdered version with a mixed ascorbate. So you probably don't want to do just straight ascorbic acid. You probably want to do like a sodium ascorbate, magnesium ascorbate, if you can get some citrus bioflavonoids in there too, and just take it ongoing. Don't wait until you're sick. We, as a family, we just take vitamin C ongoing uh, because we know it's important for the health of your capillaries and all that. Can you speak on that for a minute? Like vitamin C and skin and collagen. I mean, there's a role in other things. People think vitamin C immune, but there's other benefits to C, right? Yeah. Vitamin C plugs into making collagen, which is all the connective tissue for your skin, um, hair, you know, cartilage, vitamin C is really important for that. Vitamin C has a very similar molecular structure as glucose, right? Don't, don't quote me, but it's similar to, I think C6, H12, O6, or O8. It's right in that molecular area. It looks very similar. So what does that mean? That means vitamin C has a docking site on the macrophage that actually goes and gobbles up bacteria and potential viruses. And it's going to use that vitamin C that docks onto that macrophage to deal with the oxidation. So I kind of think of it as like a firefighter going into a house and the vitamin C is like that firefighter bringing that hose to squatch that fire, to squelch it, right? That's kind of what I see vitamin C as, right? And it's almost like with the macrophage, it has a docking site and that glucose can actually come in there because it looks very molecularly similar to vitamin C and it can almost dock on that receptor site on that macrophage and take that vitamin C where to be t where to be uh, using. It's almost like giving the firefighter a water hose, taking the water hose out and giving him a gas hose and he doesn't even know it. It's almost like that. And that's why glucose and high levels of glucose and, and when it comes to a lot of these post viral illnesses, you're going to see people that have very high levels of blood sugar, insulin resistance, and even the extreme on the diabetes side are going to have most of the side effects and most of the issues partly because of the oxidative stress, partly because of poor levels. You know, when you have insulin resistance, that's going to affect oxygenation, right? Because you're not going to have good blood flow. And when you have poor blood flow and poor oxygenation, we need oxygen to, to plug into that mitochondria as well. It's part of, you know, the key nutrients, right? We talked about B vitamins, B1, B5, very important that plug into the Krebs cycle. Well, guess what? When you have a high level of blood glucose, and you're on that pre-diabetic to diabetic side, right? 110 to 126 mg per dl on the on the blood glucose side. Your body has to process that, and if you just go pull up, you know, mitochondria Krebs cycle and nutrients, right? You're going to see all the nutrients that are involved in that Krebs cycle to process that glucose. Because how it works in the Krebs cycle, everything gets funneled down to acetyl CoA, right? So you have glucose comes to acetyl CoA. Fatty acids come to acetyl-CoA. They can also go this way into ketones. And then you have protein coming down to acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA pumps around the Krebs cycle twice. And if you look, there's going to be nutrients that have to come in there to help that acetyl-CoA come around. And a lot of those nutrients are going to be B vitamins, magnesium, amino acids. And so if you're coming in with lots of glucose and you're not bringing in a lot of nutrients to funnel down to the acetyl-CoA side, you're going to run that Krebs cycle twice and you're going to be using more B vitamins than you're coming in. So you can actually create a lot of nutrient deficiencies and oxidative stress when you consume a lot more glucose because it's a transaction fee for your body to process it energetically. Nice, nice. That's a great way to put it. And the truth is people are coming into this infection with nutrient deficiencies already due to bacterial overgrowth problems, candida problems, maybe post-antibiotic therapy, you know, they – have issues with the gut now and they're not making enough of their nutrients in their gut. And so a lot of people will just depend on diet and they'll say, well, can I just get enough on diet? Can I just eat liver and grass fed steak and all that and just get enough nutrients from that? And I'll say, look, I've tested and I know you have too, over a thousand people. And many of those people were already dialed in with their diet for years before they get to us. Paleo, carnivore, autoimmune paleo. We've had people that have been doing an incredible job with nutrient density, and they still show up with nutrient deficiencies. And so I would love if everyone could just eat their way out of this situation. But I just think with the modern stress that we're under, we're dumping a lot of those bees. You're mentioning all these bees that are fueling this um, cycle. We're so depleted and burned out emotionally physically, chemically, we're, we're exposed to toxins. 
we, we're just not living in paleo time. So paleo, you can't just like paleo your way out of this. And, you know, that's why I used to call my podcast years ago, not just paleo. And then I got rid yeah. of it and just call it Evan brand now. But yeah, uh, that was my whole thought in the beginning was like, man, if everybody could just eat their way out of this and get enough bees in the, in the diet, then you and I wouldn't, we wouldn't be needed. 